So debates are definitely still important. I'd say in the era, era of hyper-managed candidates and such a fragmented media uh, that a candidate really can always find a way to find a friendly outlet, find a softball interview, find someone who will give them the questions beforehand. And I think it's important to force candidates to confront each other, to respond to, uh, to live action interviews, a live environment in the way that only uh, an authentic and unscripted uh, debate can give them. And if Joe Biden wins in November without having come out of his basement other than for a few carefully managed interviews, town halls, back and forth with his own donor and with friendly reporters, uh, it, then it really does a disservice, I think, to the entire process. It does a disservice to voters and, and it'll set an unfortunate standard for candidate inaccessibility. We've all seen candidates who, if they would have never gone in before uh, a debate forum, would have probably, could have been more successful. I think the example of uh, Bloomberg in the primaries is that. Had he not walked out onto the stage in Nevada, uh, he might be the nominee today. Look, debates can be messy, they can be annoying, they can be uninformative, they can even be unpleasant. But it's far better for a candidate to be forced into that situation to answer tough questions instead of rep repeating memorized talking points. And for all that, I'd say that the closest things we have to seeing who the candidates really are as people and forcing kind of an authentic revelation of who they are and what they really do want to do. I concur with Chris. I think presidential debates are important to be able to understand the perspectives of the candidates. However, I think we put a little bit too much emphasis on their performance. I'm not looking for an Oscar worthy delivery on statistics or pushing back on um, bullying tactics. I'm most interested in the stance and positions that our candidates take when making important decisions, who they're going to surround themselves with. Um, I think it is, there is never a amount of time for which there is too much of seeing a candidate. So I am looking forward to seeing both presidential candidates going into this final stretch, spending as much time as possible talking to the American public. Hello, welcome back to another Millennial Minute. Today's burning question, do we really still need presidential debates? You've already heard from our guests off the top, Jenna Arnold, she's the author of Raising Our Hands, and Chris Wilson, he's a GOP pollster. Thank you both so much for taking the time to talk to us. So, we'll start with you. President debate, the President Trump called the next debate a waste of time. Chris, is this a mistake? Yeah, it is, it's a mistake. Because right now, by all intent, by all, evaluations of public polling, the president's behind. And I think the only way he has the opportunity to bring this race uh, closer and to win is to be able to illustrate the differences and the ideological uh, separation between himself and Joe Biden. And so he needs as many opportunities to do that between now and November. And I think uh, it's only, if, if, even if the next one goes forward, the second one goes forward, if he loses the one next week, that's one less opportunity to uh, close the gap and be able to, be able to win. Yeah, Jenna, you made a pretty compelling case that, you know, it doesn't ever hurt, right? That you want that time with the candidates. You want to see how they interact with others. It's not just about their stances, it's about how they treat others, how they, you know, express themselves, how they speak to you as an American voter. Yeah, I, you know, again, I'm not looking for Oscar worthy performances by the candidates. I want to see how they navigate tense situations. Again, I don't need them to stay so committed and married to their talking points. We know they have very robust teams that send out very clear and bulleted emails every single day, making sure everybody's uh, on, on the same beat. But I think the idea is like, this is who this person is, who's go going to be making life and death, death decisions on behalf of this country. And what we've seen, particularly in the last presidential debate, is the erratic behavior of the 45th administration is reflective of the state of our country today. Yeah, let's talk about that. I think we could both agree that the first debate between both candidates was pretty chaotic, Chris. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, it was, but I think it was chaotic on both ends. I don't think either of them came out looking particularly presidential, and uh, that's unfortunate because one of those two individuals on the stage is going to be our next president. And it's, uh, it, look, I understand uh, it's not fun to keep getting interrupted, but you also can't come back and tell somebody to shut up or call him a clown. I mean, what happens if he's up on the stage with another world leader who treats him the same way, speaking to Joe Biden? At the same time, Donald Trump should have been more respectful of Biden. I think it's one of those situations where uh, it just neither one of them really scored what I would call an overwhelming win. And uh, all the more reason that we need a couple more opportunities for the American public to see, and particularly undecided voters, to see them in action, see who they are, and, and to Jenna's point, be able to uh, illustrate how they respond to these situations. Does Trump come back and attack Biden again, go after him hard like that? Is Biden better able to keep his composure? Those are important things to, for us to have another chance to 
to witness. Yeah, Jenna, you said that, you know, the president acted very unpresidential. But do you agree with Chris that Biden really didn't, you know, tolerate it very well and kind of broke down with the president as well? I call them, um, I, I, I called it um, chaotic. I didn't necessarily <laughs> call it unpresidential, recognizing that sometimes, you know, as he's making policy decisions, he is wearing a presidential cap. I think there was so much pent up energy going into the last time's debate that it, it would have been hard for any human being to navigate, which is why I feel like the debates have become a circus and less about how we're all making an extraordinarily important civics-based decision on behalf of the greater good. Um, listen, it's not surprising that I skew left here. Um, I thought that Biden was just matching the tenor and the energy and the charge that was coming from Trump. I was disappointed in the conversation. I don't think anyone learned anything from it. So I encourage both candidates to show up, whether it's in person. Obviously, if it's in person, it would need to be when when Trump uh, has test negative for, for COVID. Or if it's in a virtual capacity, we need to hear from them as much as possible and from their extended teams as well. Yeah, Chris, it, polls show only about 3% of voters are undecided. I mean, this is a minuscule part of the population. We've gotten to know both of these politicians pretty well, as Jenna has pointed out. But you still stand by the fact that debates are a good opportunity for these candidates? They are. Nobody's going to change their mind at this point. Everybody who's being polled is uh, has already got their jerseys on. They know who they're voting for. I, I reject anybody who says there's an undecided voter left in America at this point. What I do think, though, is there are people who have not decided yet whether they will vote. And that's, again, why these are so crucial. And that's, what ha that's how Donald Trump won in 2016. He was able to turn out voters that didn't vote for John McCain in 2008, didn't vote for Mitt Romney in 2012. The last time they'd been to the polls was in 2004. And uh, Mark Penn writes about this in his book, Microtrend Square, that you really saw this whole influx of new voters in 2016 that had not come out before. And the question is, do they come out again in 2020? And right now, uh, it doesn't look like you're going to have that same level of influx of new voters that, uh, that elected Donald Trump in the first place. And he needs those people if he's going to get reelected. Well, anyway, thank you, you both, for making the time for us and for this very spirited conversation. Thanks. Bet. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Have a stupendous day.